Okay, welcome to this week's video on um, inputs and outputs. So last week you watched my PowerPoint on what inputs and outputs are and um, some of the big, big, I should say the big uh, types of inputs and outputs. We had two wire sensors, we had three wire sensors, both analog and digital. Uh, as far as inputs and outputs, we talked about high side and low side drivers and how transistors, which are solid state devices, operate these outputs. These series of videos that I'm going to make today that you're watching are going to be in probably four parts. Um, I'm basically going to go through and try and show you how we would diagnose inputs. And then another video, we're going to talk about outputs. And then we'll wrap up and talk about duty cycle and Hall effect and what is it. So basically, like my, my point of this video right here is to kind of simplify different various inputs and show you the process to diagnose it. So as, as usual, I have my whiteboard right here. And uh, to show the electrical schematic, on the left I have the actual circuit uh, built out. And in the middle I have my voltmeter. This is me, the tech, right, right here trying to diagnose that. So here's the circuit on the left. Let me actually draw what's going on right here on the right. So I'm going to show it uh, this way. So I have a computer, right? Here is my PCM, ECU. This, this works for any type of control unit. This, this type of uh, two-wire um, circuit. What I'm going to show is what you don't see in a schematic, which you want to have a 5-volt reference, a fixed resistor, and it's going to come out. And on this circuit that I have right here, I'm going to a switch, and I'll elaborate why later. So here is my switch. Okay, so this is basically my circuit, and inside the PCM, there is a voltmeter that measures that voltage right there. So the reason why I'm doing a switch is this is a really, really basic common input to the computer. Think about when you open a door, right? If you have your dome light or ceiling light uh, turned on the door mode, it'll come on when the door's open. Now, traditionally, vehicles had the switch in the door go directly to that light. It was a switch side ground that would power that light. The uh, battery would power the hot side. The door would open up, closing the switch, completing the circuit, turning the light on. Well, now in computer-controlled vehicles, that door switch is an input, as shown right here. This is just an input to the PCM. The PCM, again, we'll do outputs later, but to show you really quick, the PCM can actually go down and turn on that light. And in this case right here, if it's grounded like that, it's going to be a high side driver. So, but we'll talk about outputs later, okay? I'm going to erase that for now for sake of simplicity. So... Right here, we're just talking about a two-wire input, specifically a switch. And here's how the computer can tell the switch is open or closed. So in this schematic, the easiest way I can explain this is we're going to break this up into three parts. The top section is section A, which is going to be everything above the fixed resistor in the computer, the, the PCM. Section B is going to be from the fixed resistor down to the component, in this case a switch. So this is going to be section B, okay? That whole section there. And then section C is going to be everything from the switch to ground down, okay? And so as a technician, section A is always five volts. I know that's always five volts as long as the internal regulator is working. Section C should always be 0.1 or less, right? In the working circuit, it's going to be 0.1 volts or less. So section B is really, this is the section that changes based on position of the switch. And now remember Ohm's law, voltage up to the open regardless of resistance. So I have a fixed resistor in here, but this five volts is gonna go all the way down the switch. And in fact, it goes right to the tippy point of that contact right there. That's gonna be five volts. When I close a switch, this whole section up to the resistor goes to what? That's right, 0 0.1 or less. Because Ohm's law also says after the last load, Voltage is 0.1 or less, or close to zero. So the computer, what they did is they put a voltmeter in the computer that's going to monitor, it's spliced in right here, and it's going to monitor section B. So that's what we want to be focusing on as technicians. So I built a circuit right here with a simple switch, and we're going to actually do a few measurements real quick. So if you look, then it's kind of hard on the camera. I have it just going to ground. It just goes to ground right here. And I put my, my voltmeter is going to be on that ground right there. Okay, so I just have a known good ground. And on your car, that's going to be the battery. Don't be fooled to thinking it's a hinge 
or a piece of metal that's open. the only known good power and ground on a car is the battery and even that you got to make sure it's good before you diagnose. as you remember my previous video we talked about okay so this ground is right here i'm going to bring my hot side of this up to the top and we're going to see what we got right here coming in we have five volts okay so coming into the computer we have five volts and that's gonna be your five volt reference okay now notice right here i have that fixed resistor inside the circuit board of the computer okay so this is going to represent what comes out of the computer right here okay so this wire this pin right here is going to be representing what comes out of the computer and right now i have five volts because the switch is open okay so again i have five volts oops turn the light back on i have five volts right here and if i go across the switch i have zero okay now you're not going to see anything turn on because i don't have a light this is just an input so i'm going to put my voltmeter back on this wire that's coming out of the computer which is where my voltmeter see right here the internal voltmeter is monitoring that same section i'm on right here so i'm going to see if i can move my wire around here we go i'm going to flip this switch and it be, be simulating me opening the door let's say now when i open that switch look what happens 1.7 millivolts why is that because look at back at our schematic when that switch closes remember that whole section becomes c basically 0.1 or less according to Ohm's law. That's what I got. I got 0.1 or less. In fact, it's 0.0017 volts, 1.7 millivolts. So again, section B is what I'm monitoring. That's what the computer's monitoring. So if, if I want to know the computer's getting that input and I want to ma measure it manually, I can check right here, okay? Right there in the output of that computer. It'd be right here on the co computer, but it's the wire coming out of the computer to the switch. That's all that's happening. Fixed resistor inside, switch outside, computers, computers monitoring section B. It either is five volts when the switch is open, because of Ohm's law, or 0.1 when the switch is closed. Now here's the cool part that I want to show you. This simple circuit, we can change this to how temperature sensors work by just moving that switch. And all we're going to put in here, oops, I almost drew on that with a permanent marker. All right, let's get this one. Right here, we're going to change that switch with another component that you saw, which is what? What is that? A variable resistor. Okay, so that resistor, let's change that out now. The computer stuff stays the same. I'm going to put in, let's see if we can get this in here the best we can, a variable resistor. Okay, so I switched out a switch with the resistor. That's all I did. But here's a cool thing. Once you know how these circuits work, I'm back on ground now. So I take my voltmeter back on this ground. It's hard to see on the camera, but I'm down here on ground. And I'm going to go back up here um, and show you that we still have five volts coming in, right? Five volts coming in. So just like before, when I had to switch, it, the voltmeter inside the computer was monitoring for five volts or zero. Well, now the computer can determine temperature based on this thermistor, which is a negative temperature coefficient resistor, NTC thermistor. What that does is as, as this heats up, resistance goes down. So think of it this way, when it's cold, it's got high resistance. So it's like that switch that was open, right? Open is infinite resistance. So I get five volts. This type of circuit is gonna be close to five volts, but not quite five volts. Um, in fact, actually, I didn't even check this one. We'll see what this does here in a second. We'll find out together. but. The way it's designed in the car is this will be operating between 0.5 and about 4.5 volts. And the reason they do that is they need to know if it's open. If a, a circuit's open like that, this is going to read 5 volts. The computer needs to know that that's a fault, not normal operating parameter. Meaning if this sensor operated up to 5 volts, how would the computer know that 5 volts is just really, really cold engine or it's open wire? So they narrow the operating range from to 0.5 to 4.5 so that they can diagnose for opens and shorts. So let me reconnect that. We'll go back through this real quick. So again, all I did was switch this out for, uh, a, or switch the switch out, funny, for a thermistor. Okay, the circuit's the same. So when we diagnose this, and I wanna know if this circuit's working, I can back probe right here at the computer with this, my voltmeter. And again, I'm gonna check it right here at the computer, and I'm gonna get 4.89 volts, because it's cold right not five volts 
I got 4.8 because this has a lot of resistance. So now watch this. I got a I got an air gun, a little heat gun right here. Let's fire this baby up. Make sure it's got heat. Now watch this. As I apply heat to that sensor, watch my voltage. This is how the computer monitors as the engine warms up. When I heat this, this thermistor, it's got a wax pellet or change in resistance. And again, as I heat it up, resistance goes down, which is opposite what you think. Think, that's why it's called a negative temperature coefficient. But this is just like the switch. It, it's diagnosed just like the switch, but instead of doing infinite, like a, a black and white open and close, this gives me a variable resistance in between. So I'm still monitoring the same principle as Ohm's law. When it has high resistance, it's more like an open, which gives me that five volts. Though as it warms up, the resistance is going down, which is being more like that closed switch, which is getting me closer to that 0.1 volts or less. So watch that thing just keep dropping. And I'll hold this here and it keep dropping, 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 dropping. I'm gonna turn it off now. This is a really handy tool. It also can be used to check if you have, um, like a computer you think is faulty when it gets hot. You can use this to, to heat it like 10 seconds on, 10 seconds off. You kind of duty cycle that on and off, which we will talk about duty cycle later. So again, back to this circuit, it's not much different than the two wire switch. I'm just monitoring that section B. Section B is what we need to be concerned with. Could we have a fault in section, section C? Of course. What happens if this is open? I get a bad ground. Well, let's find out. Watch my voltage. I'm going to unplug this. There you go, five volts. Just like Ohm's law says, I get five volts all the way up to the open. Okay, so if I'm measuring five volts in that computer, I know since operating range is up to 4.5 ish on most of these, I know five volts means I have an open downstream, right? That means downstream. If I had zero volts in here, that'd be five up here open upstream, meaning that fixed resistor is open or the five volt regulator stopped working. So I can use this as a tech to try and diagnose whether or not the temp sensor is working. If it's a faulty wire, like if I had five volts here, I just move my meter, my test lead down to the sensor. Is it still five? Yep. Still five? Yep. And I know the open is down here in the ground. If I got right here, let's say right here was five and right here was zero, then I know that my open is in that sensor. And this is why it's really important, why I mentioned when you're measuring these components right here, I do the fraction symbols at my measuring points. And on the bottom, I'm going to write down expected values. Now this one's hard because it's in section B, but I know it's going to be 0.5 to 4.5 is my expected range. And it's same right here. Okay. Down here, I know it's going to be less than 0.1. Okay. And then above it, I'm going to write right here what I actually measure. Okay. So remember, if you write down those fraction symbols uh, at each test point, you can put down on the denominator what's expected, and then in the numerator, you write down what you measure. That's gonna keep you on track as you work your way through the circuit, um, diagnosing it. Okay, so what's gonna happen is you can look at the schematic, and once you get to the car, you can get overwhelmed with harnesses and wires everywhere. Don't get overwhelmed. You're focusing on just this one circuit, this one thing that you're diagnosing. Maybe you have a DTC for a temperature fault, or you look up a scan tool and it says negative 40 degrees, or it says it's 100, and, uh, 90 degrees you just started it you know what's going on well now you know how the circuit works watch this video again but this is basically how all two wire temperature sensors and door switches work and how the computer can monitor those positions okay thanks for watching and stay tuned for part two we will talk about three wire sensors